From coast to coast in Newfoundland and Labrador, this is Issues and Answers with Lynn Burry. Michael Connors, welcome to NTV's Issues and Answers. Lynn Burry is off this week. This week, we continue our series of interviews with candidates running for Mayor of St. John's, and we are joined by Renee Sharp. How are you? And we are also joined by Heather Gillis, who is NTV's Municipal Affairs reporter. Uh, so first of all, uh, I th believe you're new to the political arena, so why don't you introduce yourself to our viewers? Yeah, so my name is Renee Sharp. Uh, I am new to the p political arena, but not new in our community. I've been working hard for... Uh, my whole life actually working uh, closely with community organizations who, whose priority uh, is everyone's safety here in St. John's. So I'm well known in the community. As, uh, I'm well known as a women's self-defense instructor, as a welder with the Iron Workers Union, and uh, well known in the arts and uh, community organization. So that's a quite diverse range of uh, background that you have. Uh, yeah. How do you think those different experiences will help you uh, become mayor of St. John's? Absolutely. So I know exactly what the people's needs are on the on the ground level. Uh, I work with grassroots orient, uh, organizations who know exactly what people's needs are in the city. And so that makes me an excellent candidate for a mayor who knows exactly what our city's needs are from, from the ground up. So to be able to take people's uh, concerns and voices to the city level and have better representation of the working class, of, uh, again, other people who don't feel so represented on the city level. To see me in there will give encouragement and hope. And with my organizational, organizational skills within the community, that makes me an excellent leader for someone who would, who's running for mayor. So I think I'm prepared. Yeah. Many, many, many people who jump into municipal politics start at one of the councillor positions. So why did you go straight for mayor? I went big. I went big because there's big changes to be made. I see a gap, and I want to fill that gap with my experience again with the community. I, and by gap, I mean I need to see, and we need to see as a city, better consultations with people in the community, with organizations who are working tirelessly and without support, financial or moral, or they're not given the voice that they deserve on city council. So um, that, that's what I would bring. That would be my focus, consultation, make sure everyone's represented on the city council level. Heather? Yeah. So first off, you just mentioned that through your work with community groups, you know what people want. So what do people in the city want? Mm -hmm. They want to see themselves represented. They want to see their needs met. We want to see better access to services. So we're talking about mental health services, addiction services, services to better uh, uh, address our opioid crisis here in the city. Uh, we need to make sure there's better housing support, more affordable housing for people. Uh, just generally, generally, the populace, population of St. John's are suffering from expensive rent that hasn't gone down to meet how our economy has gone down. People are struggling, and what I'm hearing is a lot of frustration and a lot, just a need for their voices to be again raised uh, at city level and to see action being taken and less. Uh, hoops to jump through and more transparency. How do you think the city can deal with things like the opioid crisis? Because that's generally mm -hmm. a provincial issue. It is, but in the city level we need to make sure that uh, organizations that are working with harm reduction models, as in reducing the harm for people who are using drugs, we need to better support those organizations because they are in our city. Our city center, we are seeing overdoses. That is our business it is our responsibility as a city council to better address that issue and to better support again the organization that are working towards supporting people who are struggling again with addictions with the mental health issues because that that is a community issue here in our city and when we help people who are struggling um, that saves us uh, in, so, in so many ways, economically included. When people are safe, uh, we save money. You know what I mean? When, when people are, have better access to services, crime goes down. And when problems are taken down in our city, we are, are just better taken care of financially, morally, and uh, it's good. Yeah. So we've seen steps from the province on that issue, such as the naloxone kits, mm -hmm. and they've been doing the pop-up uh, the, the pop up tents. Uh, but what specifically can the city do, do you think, to, to help out with that? Yes, so we, we don't have to look very far to cities who are doing it right when it comes to their opioid crisis and their drug crisis. So Vancouver, as we know, and Toronto just recently had their uh, safe injection sites. Um, again, you're right, it's, it's federal and provincial funding with that, but we need 
to we do need to bring uh, attention to the fact that we do need safe uh, uh, safe drug injection sites in our city. And me, as a mayor, would make sure we are working in collaboration with people who can make that happen, because that is a priority. People's safety is a priority. Um, and that's that's a good question. Yes, so, so, so groups like the AIDS Committee, I believe, already do needle exchanges and things like that. But So what do you mean by safe injection site? You think there needs to be actual sites where people can go? Or at least a safe place within those organizations to, um, to, to be able to use in a safe way, right? So we're talking about um, SWAP, the uh, Safe Work Access Program. We're talking about uh, SHOP, um, the uh, Safe Harbor Outreach Program. Mm -hmm. And so people who are already working with at-risk populations that are using drugs, we need to be able to say, okay, so here are the naloxone kits, which is a preventative thing, yeah. which, which is to help someone who's overdosing in that moment. Here are the uh, safe boxes where you could put your used needles, the, and those are important. But what I'm talking about is we need preventative measure, measures to help support people with addictions. So a uh, safe access program, SHOP, and other uh, programs that help people with their mental health um, and addictions uh, issues, that's preventative. We're, we're going to make sure people are taken care of before they go ahead and use drugs in an unsafe way, right? So good question. Yeah. yeah just on another thing, you, you stress a lot in your platform, you, you stress that you will do actual public consultations. So what do you see right now about the, what the city is doing that's not an actual public consultation? Mm -hmm. How do you want to change it and improve it? Well, when we see uh, public consultations, usually uh, we see a lot of hoops that people have to jump through, a lot of in inaccessible information, and it takes years before ideas can come uh, forthright. So when we talk about actual consultations, I'm going to be talking about me working in consultation well with the uh, incredible knowledge that already exists on city council uh, that plus the new knowledge that's about to uh, uh, come in and saying listen we need to in a very serious way get rid of the barriers uh, between us on city council and the community organizations who are working hard and liter and make sure all those barriers are taken away when we do consult with each other. So for example, we need better consultation with the indigenous uh, community in our city. They are not represented in any way on city council and they are trying very hard, right? So we would make sure to have uh, real solutions to better um, uh, visibility and better raising of the voices and concerns of our indigenous uh, population here in St. John's. Um, again, better, better uh, transparency and consultation with people who are trying to start small businesses. We need to make sure that the bureaucracy is a lot easier than it is right now because, again, a lot of uh, barriers to um, being able to uh, get, get a small business up and started. And there's so many vacant um, uh, spaces in our city that could be used for small, for, for small businesses, uh, for businesses that already exist that are just not being used. So why? So better consultations means making sure that our under, underutilized spaces are revitalized and are accessible for people who are trying to start their businesses and to work in consultation that works, not in a way that's going to take a few years, not in a way that's really unclear what you need to do exam, uh, uh, exactly to start a small business or to continue your business in a way that's fair for you and your employees. So just making sure the transparency is there, as me as a, a, a person who's running for mayor, be, be clear about what my intentions are, and transparency as a city council to say, this is exactly how we can help you start your small business, this is exactly we can help, how we can help you um, move your, your community organization along, um, this is how we can support you, what do you need from us? From us? A better back and forth dialogue that people can feel um, uh, good about and not jaded about because people are feeling pretty left out right now in city council is not okay. So, Heather? Um, you talk about snow clearing as well. That's yeah. a, a hotly contested yes. service in the city of St. John's. A lot of people talk about that once we have mm -hmm. major storms. What would you like to see change? So accessibility in St. John's generally is an issue for me and the whole community, right? So when I was doing uh, uh, open line actually with CBC, a woman called in and she asked me what am I going to do about sidewalk, uh, clearing sidewalks because she had a visibility issue. She could not literally move around in a safe way 
during our very long winter season here in St. John's. She is speaking for a very large community who have uh, mobility issues, uh, who have, again, uh, visual impairment. We're thinking about our seniors, thinking about our parents who are trying to get around with a stroller. This is absurd. We need an accessible city because that equals safety. That equals people's, people having a dignity to life in our city. And it comes down to snow plowing. And I understand that people want to lower taxes. And they think, you know what, snow clearing costs too much. And I'm saying it costs a lot more when people are unsafe and their lives are literally at risk when they're walking on these busy roads. So it's not accessible. It's not acceptable. And that's something that definitely has to change. So are you saying if you're mayor, you're going to put more money into snow clearing? I'm saying if I'm mayor, I'm going to use our money in the most equitable and innovative and creative way with saving money at the core of it, but safety uh, being a priority. Most definitely. I would never be able to say I would further lower taxes because that would be unfair for me to say I could do that as mayor. I would be working in collaboration with the incredibly smart people who are going to be on city council to say, hey, how can we make this city more equitable, accessible? How can we deal with snow clearing in an innovative and smart way that doesn't take all of our tax money? So we'd be figuring that out together. But it is my goal to make a safer and accessible city. And that does include snow clearing, of course. So. On that note, we'll take a short break for commercial. We'll be right back with more of NTV's Issues and Answers. Welcome back to NTV's Issues and Answers. Our guest once again is Renee Sharp, who is running for mayor of St. John's. I want to go back to something you, you said just before the break about taxes, because uh, Andy Wells is running on a platform of cutting spending, cutting taxes. Uh, D Danny Breen is running more on a platform of holding the line. But I guess, what do you believe in? Are you actually looking to increase spending? No, no. My, my plan would be to keep costs as low as possible knowing that the costs, uh, the taxes are as low as they have been in 2015. So my focus would be to spend, again, the money in a more, uh, uh, in a way that's more creative and makes more sense for people's needs to be met generally. Because I'm hearing people are frustrated, obviously, with how our, our, our tax money is spent. And I understand those frustrations when we actually don't know where exactly our tax money is going. And that's where transparency comes in. We need to be really open with how exactly we're spending our money. I would not promise to lower taxes because that's just not something that is feasible. That, that promise uh, is, is something to get you votes, and I understand that. But me, I am transparent in, in the way that I would run this city in collaboration with the council. And I'm saying I would keep them as low as possible. And when we talk about uh, cutting taxes, that's very dangerous. Because what are we saying? Are we going to cut taxes? Are we going to cut this funding that goes towards, again, snow clearing? Are we going to cut the, um, the programs and money that goes towards after school programs? Are we going to, you know what I mean? Uh, and I'm not interested in cutting city services that benefit our, our constituents. So I'm saying spend the money smarter and in collaboration, again, with what the people's uh, needs are. Smart spending. Mm -hmm. uh, you and I have talked about this before, but uh, I just want to talk a little bit about women in politics. Only seven women yeah. elected to St. John's City Hall since 1925. You're the only female candidate for uh, mayor, so how do we get more women, women's voices on council? Mm -hmm. Well, you know what? Uh, a big part of why I ran, again, I said I, it, it, I'm in... There's big changes that need to be made, so I stepped up. But was I ever inspired by the other women who are currently running uh, to, to have a seat at the city council? I'm so inspired by Maggie Burton, who's running for council at large. I'm so inspired by Hope Jamison, who's running for Ward 2. So inspired forever by Sheila O'Leary, who's currently on council and running for deputy mayor. And, um, and the other woman, Heather, what's her? What's her? Uh, uh, Debbie Hanlon is running as well. She, yeah, she just put her name in the hat. So, but, but I know there's five of us in all who's running for council, and I am so inspired. It's an exciting time, and, and people are excited. And what I'm hearing is new hope, a renewal of, of hope uh, with the city council. Uh, again, better representation is crucial when we talk about a fair city council. 
And so um, I've been getting incredible feedback as a woman myself running for mayor because I'm seen not only as a woman, but a, a strong leader, a smart, competent woman, and a woman who really has the needs of the community at the forefront of her mind. So I think it's exciting to have women in, but it would also be so exciting to have um, a person of color to run for mayor or an indigenous person to run for mayor, a trans person to run for mayor, people in the LBGT community to run for more mayor or any seat on the council. It's an exciting time and people are taking more interest in our lives here uh, politically in the city. And so it's an exciting time for women and just underrepresented people in general. And uh, I think we're going to see some really positive changes made in the city. Yeah. You, you referenced indigenous issues as well. Often in this province, we think about you know Labrador, Halibut, Mi'kmaq, Con River. What specifically in St. John's? Uh, what issues with indigenous people do you need to see addressed in St. John's? Yeah, I need to see uh, a a public consultation, a public pairing of interests, a partnership with indigenous people in this community. Because here in St. John's, um, I know that they struggled. Actually, the the St. John's Native Friendship Center really struggled and were, were met with um, a lot of um, uh, what, what's opposition when they were trying to open their daycare center. And now it's passed, thankfully. But these things should just should be streamlined as priorities as us here in Newfoundland and Labrador. When our indigenous communities are, are fighting for their, their empowerment and their voice and doing a beautiful job, but we need to act uh, as allies uh, to these people who uh, are indigenous to Newfoundland and Labrador, they, they are important and we must raise their efforts um, and uh, that would be crucial if I get in as mayor and I'm looking forward to it because I've worked closely with indigenous communities with my teaching women's self-defense. Uh, I was lucky enough to teach uh, young girls in a school in Sheheshi last uh, year and uh, it was incredible and to see the resilience in that community is amazing. Uh, I teach a two-day, 15-hour course, and after the first day, a Thursday, the teacher said to me, you know, Renee, uh, don't expect the young girls to come in for their last day of class because the bus are broke down and we don't have enough money to fix them. And the next day, Friday, which was the last day of the course, every young girl showed up to my course. They walked to the course, um, despite having a broke down bus, uh, bus system. So that speaks to their resiliency and it speaks to the lack of services that they have. So that's provincially, but I take that um, core issue here in the city as well, because um, I want to celebrate their resiliency, I want to celebrate their culture, and I want to stand as an ally with them. So I think it's crucial, and I think uh, unless everyone's voice is heard on city council, we're not doing a good job. And we'll take one more break on NTV's Issues and Answers. Stay with us. We'll be back after this. Welcome back to NTV's Issues and Answers. Our guest once again is Renee Sharp, candidate for mayor of St. John's, and our next question comes from Heather Gillis. So you also mentioned urban, urban design and planning in your platform. What would you like to change on that aspect in St. Mm, John's? Absolutely. I would love to work in collaboration with city planners who have a, a more uh, exciting vision for a city that uh, helps us develop economically, uh, helps us develop better with the arts, um, helps us, um, I want a revitalization and better use again of the empty spaces that are in St. John's. So I would um, make sure we're working again in close consultation with the experts who are on the ground um, working to make a more accessible city again, more accessible again for just people, their communities, local businesses that exist, new businesses that are trying to get started off the ground. So again, I will be working with the experts who have uh, an, a more uh, equitable and uh, with economic development at the forefront of their mind uh, a, a vision for our city. And I think that could be really good. The vacancies downtown are partly a result of a downturn in the economy. I mean, what can you mm. actually do to, to, to turn that around? Oh, totally. I would, I would work harder to create some incentives for people to use those spaces. So when people own those buildings, they actually had to pay less taxes when those spaces are empty. That's not an incentive, incentive to rent out your space, right? So we would work 
both with the, the building owners and work with the people who want to take up space in those buildings and create incentives like, um, again, a more clear, um, more clear instructions on how exactly you uh, proceed to start a business. Uh, so again, the transparency and how to uh, work with the people who are on city council. Um, and basic services that need to be improved, like the snow clearing. If, when people are starting a small business or when people have their existing businesses and there's no snow clearing in front of their business, that's bad. So when we talk about uh, just like a more exciting time and a more uh, accessible time to start businesses uh, and to use these spaces, I think would be good. And to focus on the uh, services that we need, again, for the people who are... are looking for services like counseling services um, again in regards to addictions and mental health to get their um, community organizations in those spaces I would work with whoever I need to work with to make that happen and again to revitalize our downtown center because it's an exciting time and it will happen well on that note we're right out of time Renee Sharp thank you very much thank for joining you so us much. Thank you. and thank you to Heather Gillis and that is it for this week's edition of NTV's Issues and Answers. Nominations have closed in the race for Council of St. John's, and the election happens on September 26th. Enjoy the rest of your weekend.